Jacksonville, Florida, the west side, a place that working people call home and a place where southern bred children learn about things like pride and family. It's here that a group of young boys once shared their dream to make music. A dream touched by tragedy, but music that lives on. It's hard enough just going on stage and playing your heart out every night, but for the Leonard Skinner Tribute Band, it means a lot more. They've come together to honor the music and the fans who love it. But every night of this tour, nobody forgets those special people who were part of the past. Guitarist Steve Gaines. Backup singer Cassie Gaines. Assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick. And lead singer and songwriter Ronnie Van Zandt. All killed when the Skinner plane crashed October 20th, 1977. Other band and crew members were injured also, some very seriously. At the height of success, the Skinner dream had shattered. Ironically, the tragedy that kept them apart would bring them together again. And 10 years after the crash, those who survived, who had moved on with their own lives and careers, would make the decision to reunite drummer Artemis Powell. To me, it was just something that had to be done. You know, the last thing we did together uh, as a band was have a plane crash. You know? And I wanted the last thing we did together would to be, you know, to put some good gigs under, under our belt. Keyboard player Billy Powell. You know, it's a tribute to the people that died on the airplane crash. It's a tribute to the fans. And it's a, it's a feeling. It is kind of like a second dream come true. Bass guitarist. Leon Wilkinson. I literally bang my head against the wall every night for it to happen, you know. Nothing could, could touch or compare to what's going on with this band, this tour, the tribute tour. Alan Collins would lend his support from the sidelines. Recovering from a car accident which left him paralyzed, Alan chose Randall Hall to take his place. It's bittersweet. I know he wishes it was him. You know, but I'm glad I was the one he wanted to be. Proud, honored, but still overwhelming. Ed King had left the band two years before the crash. I quit the band early. I did not want to quit the band, but I felt like, man, there's nothing left for me to do. For all of us, um, the Leonard Skinner band was a job that we never got to finish. Gary Rosington was the last original band member to join the tribute tour. For Gary and his wife, singer Dale Krantz Rossington, it was a hard choice. It frightened him maybe more than the rest of them. Some of them were very eager to do it, and Gary was very reluctant to do it because he's a little more emotional. It took a lot of talk, and then finally I realized after that 10 years and the anniversary and the reunion and all this stuff that somehow somebody was going to do something and, and do a Skinner thing. So I decided, hey, let's do it right. Backup singer Carol Bristow was a longtime friend and fan. There was a big void, and I know that the people missed Leonard Skinner, and they missed that music, and they missed all the guys. And finally, the man who would stand where Ronnie Van Zant once stood, his youngest brother, Johnny. It took me actually a long time to make up my mind, 
I was actually pretty scared about the whole thing. I didn't know if I could do it or not, to be honest. Um, you know, nobody could sing these songs as good as Ronnie Van Zandt. I'm not out here trying to do that. You know, I feel that I'm, I'm singing them the very best I can, and every night I try to. The Van Zandt's daddy, Lacey, would support his son and the idea of a tribute. And I know Ronnie's in the balconies of heaven, looking over the balcony, balcony and saying, baby brother, go sing my music, sing my songs loud and clear. As it was 10 years ago, the circle would be complete. The band, the fans, the songs. Music, it comes from something very real, very basic. Things your mom or daddy might have told you. I never liked my mind to get too high above what they were raised as. I think you just live on simple basics. You don't have to have all this fame and glory to be happy. Gary Rossington's okay, mom remembers. To, I had always told him to be a, I want him to be a good person and, and uh, just be himself and uh, not try to do anything phony, you know. I guess that's where he got it, but, uh, but he meant, you know, he was just a simple person, simple man.
Simple men from simple beginnings. The Van Zants grew up in this house. Ronnie called the neighborhood Shantytown. It's been so long since I've been gone. Another day here might be too long for me. Their daddy was a trucker who loved to sing. Her teeth is bright and pearly, and her hair is black as jet. Oh, her lips are sweet as honey, and her heart beats. Do I know? Yes, I know. They lay on the piano, guitar, just like Lacey said, sang in the bathtub. That was their main thing. Marion Van Zant remembers her son Ronnie's public debut. First day he went to school, he sat in the corner with a dunce hat on his head, <laughs> singing Ricochet Romance and Beer Drinking Daddy in the classroom. So I had to go at the schoolhouse and Take Ronnie outside and tend to him a little bit. Ronnie and Gene Odom were boyhood friends. 
But we used to fish a lot. We used to love to fish. We just grew up together. And he was a, Ronnie Van Zandt was the nicest fellow I ever met. Gary Rossington lived just a few blocks away. When he was real small, we got him a, um, a little Gene Autry guitar for Christmas one time. And he picked around on that a lot, you know, and enjoyed that. And then I guess it got laid aside when he got into Little League baseball. And he wanted to be a Yankee. He was a Yankee fan, and he was going to play on the Yankee team when he grew up. He just knew he would be a baseball player. playing Little League Baseball together. And we knew each other, but not very well. And me and Bob Burns went to uh, see Ronnie's team. Uh, his baseball team was called the Green Pigs. Anyway, we went to see him, and we were on the uh, third baseline just standing there watching. And Ronnie got up to bat, and we didn't really know him. And he hit a foul ball real hard and hit Bob right in the head and knocked him out. And we freaked out, and he ran over there, and he said, Bob, you know, he didn't know him. He went, oh, man, I killed this guy. And, he woke up, and after the game, then we got together and talked, and we said, hey, you play drums, and you play guitar, and you sing. Let's... So we went right down the road to, to Bob's house and started playing. I miss old friends that I once had. Times they change, but I'll be glad when I go home. They eventually became the 1% band but that would change because of this man, a high school gym coach who dared enforce a dress code on the young, long-haired rock and rollers. My name is Leonard Skinner, and uh, I spell it uh, L-E-O-N-A-R-D-S-K-I-N-N-E-R. -E a lot of teachers and a lot of coaches sent a lot of boys and girls down for violation of the dress code. But lucky me, one of the ones I sent down was in this band. And so I became famous by accident, I guess. The Leonard Skinner band would soon begin to make its mark around Jacksonville, hanging out at clubs like this one, which used to be called The Still. Randall Hall was just getting started. This is the day I met everybody in Leonard Skinner. I'd heard about them, a lot of my friends knew them, and of course, it's prior to their ever, you know, coming to the public light. I was 17, still a senior in high school, the day I met him, played this ecology Earth Day thing downtown. And uh, it's great. When I look back on that stuff, I go, I can't believe it. That's half my life ago. Leon Wilkerson was another West Side boy they brought into the fold. His folks knew he had big dreams bass guitar that was his choice and and he's one day he says he was someday I'm gonna be the best uh, bass guitar player in the world or something like that something similar to that and uh, and when he said it we had no idea he'd become as famous as he did with the Leonard Skinner group <laughs> well I took him down to get music lessons he went he went down with me one time he says, that guy don't know anything about music. I know more. I could teach him. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, Alan came up and said, Leon, come on, right around the block. I want to talk to you. And immediately, my heart was in my throat, you know, with anticipating what they were about to talk about, because I knew that, that uh, they, they were empty in, in the void of, of drummer and bass player. And that's when they asked me. West Sider Billy Powell filled the keyboard spot. I sat down, played in my version of Freebird, and uh, they, their dro jaws dropped to the ground. I said, man, you mean to tell me you've been playing the piano like that and didn't tell us? I said, I had no idea that you wanted a keyboard player in the band or anything like that. He said, well, do you want a job? My jaws dropped to the ground then, you know. I said, yeah, of course I do. And so that's how I got in Skinner. Ed King was a guitar player from the South. Well, sorta. Southern California. When Ed left, Steve Gaines stepped in, and Artemis Pyle says everybody in the group respected their new guitar player. Steve was a very special person. He just had hands. He could, he could flip a bottle top across the room, you know, and, 
and uh, hit a fly off the wall or he could play guitar. Never took his guitar off. But the talent of the man at center stage still inspires them. He was a rare person. He had a quality about him that it just reeked of greatness. And he never wrote anything down. It was always in his head. Mm. Never wrote anything down. And uh, he was just, a, he was a genius. You know, he had just so many ideas. Together, it worked. They sold millions of albums, played to sell out crowds, but never lost a sense of who they were or where they came from. You could feel that on stage and on film. When a band goes into play, you're playing for the people, not for yourself. And uh, I, there's something about, uh, you know, playing in front of 50,000 people and seeing them still get up for that song, seeing them stand up. And just seeing the people get up and uh, put their hands together for a song that you wrote, uh, to me, that's what, uh, that's what it's all about. That's what makes me keep going back. I don't consider myself a star at all. I just, I'm just as normal as anybody. He's like he's always been. That he's just a nice person. You know, when I come out here like this, I'm just about speechless. Um, I don't say much. I just Today, the loss is still painful for friends, family, and fans. But a father will tell you that's why the tribute tour means so much. And Daddy followed him every step. <laughs> so I do. I intend to travel every mile with him. And every show, I feel his fear. On the tribute tour, or any tour, home is the road. And family is made up of the people who make it all happen. Jack, you your hands? Back, back, 20 feet, that's base, one's eight and one's six. That's only 14 feet, theoretically. 23 feet. It's gonna rain tonight. It all feels pretty familiar to guys like Craig Reed. He was with them the first time around. When they said they were going to put this together, I didn't really think it would ever happen again. And it's just like uh, the band was still just as good musically. And Joe Osborne. So I've spent, spent my whole life, been that many years with the band, and 10 years past, it's like you know, you're still living it. You used to have all these memories, and it seems like yesterday. Getting the band ready to play is hard work, but some, like Mike Sparks, don't always look at it like that. I tune every day. I tune the band every day. I put strings on the guitars. I get to play guitar all day. I'm having a great time. As showtime gets closer, you can feel the intensity start to build, and everybody has a different way of dealing with it. Well, this is the calm before the storm. <laughs> this is a very intense, <laughs> intense game. Okay. I don't know. I have this thing about seeing everything in my wardrobe case every night. Yeah, no, no. Don't talk. When we were kids, my mom used to do this to me. Don't talk. You know, turn turn, turn right. And uh, you always come out with white walls around her ears, you know? <laughs> This is for heart. 
This is from Annie and Nancy Wilson, oh, man. Did, man. Check it out. Heart, keep up the good work, Heart. Hey, these flowers are? Yeah, man, isn't that great looking? Oh, they're beautiful. They're so, so I mean, such heart. class. Look at the class. Man. Oh, man. There's not a rock and roller out there that hasn't been caught ironing his or her own shirt before the show. And... so nervous it's it's like it's something that's never gone away and i don't know why it's like that oh i get i get very revved i get but you know i'm a nervous person anyway i you know it's like i don't fish okay <laughs> you know it's like because the fish they just they leave this is very hard to make complete sentences five minutes before the show but i'll try well those few minutes before it's just god i can't even explain how i feel it's just so scary and you just want to hit something or run away or go out there and get it done, but it's but it's real special because you know they're waiting for you. Okay, you win. Finally, the waiting's over. How long do we have? About seven minutes. I'll meet you down there. Oh, this has been a great set tonight. I thank you for all good things. I thank you for everything you've done for us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 All right. Yeah. Uh, my friend Jackson Brown, uh, the time that we don't get enough is the time that we get to play. I saw the flowers on You will have your tribute, a Leonard Skinner. Stand by. Ready, camera one? Take one.
tonight some things about the road just don't change endless hours and countless cities will make you lose track of time real quick the important thing is not to lose yourself in all that chaos ed king's mom knows that the fact that he was maybe more popular didn't overly impressed me let's put it that way i was well, proud of him always been a regular guy right? but he's always been he has been and it's true he's never changed but in many ways this is not the same group of guys that toured as leonard skinner a decade or so ago i know because i was with them a lot back then the tribute band is on a different road People have read stories about the old Leonard Skinner band. The stories can't begin to touch reality. But now those days are gone. You know, love, mm. We've all grown up. And this band is as different from the other band as night and day. You can see it in places like the Miami Project, which is dedicated to finding a cure for paralysis. The band's sponsor, Cabin Fever Entertainment, is donating some proceeds from the tour to help in the fight. For the band, it's a place that hits very close to home. It's way ahead of everything, of everything I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, I never knew that it existed. You know, I tell you, they put a couple of electrodes on me in my leg. You know, I moved the first time I seen it in a couple of years. So that gave me a whole lot of hope. He came in and played guitar with us the other day. He came in and he strummed some uh, the chords to Curtis Slope. We want to see Alan back on stage with us. We'd like to see him up, and we've got some people that are encouraging us that Alan can be a part of this again, because he's a part of it. He's with us every night, but we want him up there playing. And uh, naturally, you know, we get to go out and play rock and roll and, and our music, but when we can be involved with something that helps other people, which is the Miami Project, that's what it's about. Hello, Johnny Van Zandt. Johnny Van Zandt. I'm Randall Hall. This is For the tribute band, the road now means giving something back and making a difference. Well, I think right now, after uh, going through and seeing uh, you know everything I've seen today, it means a whole lot more to me. You know, because I mean, you know, when you when you get involved in something and you you know, you know what it is, but when you see it firsthand, like we just went in today and saw some people, there was a lot of a lot of people and there was a lot of courage and stuff like that. Last shot, last shot, last shot. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 About eight minutes. Well, that was uh, Gary's band. We just came off stage and went running through here. Wow. Excited, I guess. And curious. Look at my hands up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. More than anything, this tour feels like a family business. Artemis Pyle, who now lives in Jerusalem, brought his two kids along. My son Marshall and Chris. I kept them out of school to do it. I mean, you know, it's a better education than what they get sitting in a classroom. 
Well, it's what I want to do for a living, you know? It's great. I just, I don't know, really look up to him for it, you know? For working really hard and getting up there and doing it. For a while there, my dad was just, he wasn't around as much. And I never got to see him. And uh, his dad was killed in a plane crash. And I never had a grandfather. And uh, he's, he just thinks that he should get more closer to get closer to his, to his kids because he he just he was sorry he didn't get as close as we are there are there are a couple of times when people just they ask me what do you think about your dad being a star and my dad tells me just to say my dad's not a star he's just he just does it for a living like anyone else he's he's a normal father he, he does things just like anyone else would he brings home the bacon as they say I watched an Elizabeth Taylor movie today that made me boo-hoo so hard. <laughs> what movie? It was the, uh, She Dies. It was Van, ha uh, Van, Van Johnson. Halen. No, Van Halen. Halen. Van Halen and Elizabeth Taylor. You know that one. You know that Van movie. Johnson. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Rossington have each other on the road. But every day, a part of them is back in Wyoming with their two little girls. We're doing it for them, too. I think you know? this was the hardest one for us because of them, because they're so young now. The fact that they're, they're still babies and we have to leave them for two months at a time, that's... That is, a, that's this the hardest particular thing tour, yeah. to do is leave them, like I said earlier, but it's just a whole other lifestyle. <laughs> and and the only simple. thing that happens yeah. is uh, for an hour or two a day, we got to get on the phone and do business, and then we're just mom and dad. We're we parents have. now. We want to do things respectively so our kids can grow up proud of us. Some little girl came up to Mary one day and said, why does your daddy have long hair? And it hurt Gary, he overheard it, and Mary just brushed it off and said, well, he plays guitar. And, but it hurt his feelings, and he was upset at whoever's mama made this little girl feel that way. So I wrote a song and made the girls learn it. I made them sing it 10 times. I got a handsome long hair daddy, and he sure can't play guitar. He's my handsome, long-haired daddy. They say he is a big rock star. Well, millions love to hear him play his rock and roll. He's my handsome, long-haired daddy. And oh, I love him so. And they go, oh, I love him so. <laughs> and I made them learn it, and now they can be proud. Every night, the Rossington Band opens a show for the Tribute Band. For Gary and Dale, it's double the work and double the stress, but they manage to keep it together. It is hard, but uh, we were worried about, you know, if we get along and, you know, we didn't want to hurt our marriage or our family, but I don't know, we just knew we needed to do the music. He understands my moods and I certainly understand his, and and there's a, a, quite a mutual respect there. I love him badly. For Billy Powell, his wife Ellen is his strength on the road. And I uh, couldn't do without her. And she knows it too. It's never old. To see him thrilled doing what he's doing, to see him so happy. Really? But to understand how life has really changed for a lot of people on the tour, catch him on a break from the schedule. A backyard barbecue at Billy Powell's in Jacksonville. This is yours, Randall. Happy birthday. Yeah, Randall. Thank you. Nobody else, <laughs> nobody else want anything? Yeah. Go ahead, Randall. Okay. That's your plate. The faces may be the same, but the focus is a little different. It's about what matters. At some point in the day, we just sit and look back and just over the day's events and think how blessed we are. We, we have a good life. To me, my eyes really, God comes first, family comes second, music comes third. I'd quit right now if, for my family if there's some reason that I would, I would have to quit. You know? That we're 10 years older, 10 years wiser, 10 years better, 10 years after. Some may be crazy, woman, but I ain't no fool. 
While the band members do their jobs on stage, behind them is a finely tuned, well-oiled machine that gets them there. I'm going to fix the move the circus. This is not a rock and roll tour, it's a circus. And uh, we don't have roadies, we have carnies. So get that right. Okay, and we're fixing to move the whole operation in one hour. Throw that on there and this somewhere, but I'm going to carry this. Get five or six extra bags today. We'll sell them in the next city. Yep, a well-oiled machine, but sometimes the wheel does get a little squeaky. Can anybody tell me how far San Francisco is? <laughs> we done broke down out here in the doggone wood. <laughs> Doesn't help to get upset. Nothing, nothing else to do. Just wait. Just wait. Oh, God, isn't this the pits or what? 1,000 degrees outside. In a few minutes, it's going to be 2,000 on that bus. Did you, get, you ever see Lost in America with Albert Brooks? And he goes, this is Kenny Camera, right? Come on, send out Alan Fun. Let's end this thing. Let's end this thing. I'm up here surveying the situation, and uh, it doesn't look good from up here. It doesn't look real good. What's it look like down there?
Oh, I like these incidences. They just assure me that I'm going to have a good gig. There's a restaurant right there, five-minute walk. I'm, I'm really glad that the bus broke down, even though we're late now. I'm going to get in trouble, but because we all got to spend time together and have lunch and just, you know, it was fun. It was an excursion. It was an adventure. We're ready. We need to get these people right over here and these people right over here. God of Cowboys. When the bus breaks down for the second time, we could write help on it. What's going on? Uh, we broke down. You sing it, huh? Get off by the cool place. Don't see yeah. So, <laughs> Lou, I mean, I'm why don't we go ahead and just get the one van? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Well, sure. We will get out of here. We'll just do the best we can. Here we are on the side of the road, right? In the middle of who knows where. And uh, this man comes out of nowhere. He is a fan. He was at the hey, Cal Expo Skinner. last night. Tell him about it, man. That's right. That was the rockingest concert I've ever been to in my life. The video screens, the memorials, everything was there. I mean, hey, I never had a better time in my life. Amen. And I thought Robert Plant blew me away with Zeppelin when he played Zeppelin. I came in there, and the whole crowd was relating to Leonard Skinner. And everybody knows every song, and we was all rocking along. Let me tell you, we was, I, was I saw it too, man. That's right. With all the lights over the crowd, hey, man, that was great. I could me, see the crowd man. the whole time. I'm a young man, you know, and I got goose pimples, you know. And that's something that rocks a man. That's right. This is my man, Artemis Pyle. Man, my name's Rod McComin. Rock and Rod. Rock and Rod. I'm a fighter. R.O.D. Okay, we need Leon. Doesn't matter. It's all the same. Mr. Leon, please. you don't know. Yeah, boy. <laughs> the uh, bus broke down twice, overheated twice. We made it. Live, living, and breathing. Shoot. It was a mess. But we're here. We made it. After a slight detour, it's back to business. For this band, almost every day in almost every city, that means a sound check to make sure everything is just right. You gotta, you gotta tell me what you like. I don't know, man. I like that. You're right. Half the bands I know, or all of them, they only do sound checks. You know, they just go play. I mean, it's too big of a hassle to do. And, and you know, we do them every day without fail unless we just can't to make it right. Yes, Well, I don't read them daily news Cause it ain't how to figure what people get the blues But they can dig what they can use If they stick to themselves and be much less abuse Say, I know a little It's the sound of Southern rock, but the people who play it have musical heroes and tastes as different as they are from one another. But the clincher was when I saw Jimi Hendrix and I went, that's it. I mean, and open up for the monkeys. He just, I forget, monkeys who? Forgot all about them. <laughs> I'm sorry, monkeys, if y'all are watching this, but uh, <laughs> I love you guys, but Jimmy just stole my heart. It's mostly Earl Clue and George Benson. Don't know it well 
that I could make you laugh if I only knew how to make you cry. That's all I can think of. <laughs> I'm a little tense before the show, you know? And Leon, no offense intended if you didn't like the way I sang your song. You know, one of my favorite things of all time is to sit down sometimes by myself, all alone, and play to myself. I love it, I, I really do. surround myself with the other musicians on stage. Honest to God, it's not show. It's from feeling. That's the way I feel my music. I genuinely have a good time. I'm not an actor by any means. I can't go out there and go, well, I feel like blank tonight, but here I am with a smile. I'm for sure, I'm for real. And I'm a drummer. I sit there, I see the band. I see the people out front. Um, I see the guys in behind stage. I see the crew. So really, I have the best seat in the house. Our music is our gimmick, and we just come out, plug a chord into an amp, and, and just play, you know. And, and that's what people relate to. And I mean, it wasn't for the money or the prestige. But the way I, I feel about it, we just went out and did it for the people. For the people. They don't come any more loyal than a Leonard Skinner fan. I want to show you a dedicated fan. This, my whole right arm is dedicated to the late Van Zant, and this is Freebird, the musical notes. I had it designed myself. I'm a tattoo artist. Learn to realize the, the the value of accepting. You know, the, the, the fact that the fans have made this successful, obviously. It's just, it's just an interesting collaboration and a perfect formula. This guy's been waiting since uh, 8.30 this morning. 11.20 now. And I think their music, you know, from that point of view, is I think that's where a lot of strength from the fans is just because they, they're honest. It's good, honest music. They asked me to sign an autograph and asked me, what does it feel like to be a star? And I said, look up in a clear night, you see a star. You know, my name is Billy Powell. Yeah, I don't get fat-headed about nothing. This is music. This is down-home rock and roll. The way we live and breathe every day. The only thing I listen to for the last 10 years, the only thing I'll listen to for the next 10. They got it. That boss baby right here. She's about to have, it yeah. was conceived November 1st in Dallas last year when you guys Oh, well, wow. congratulations. Oh, the fans are what make it, you know? Yeah, we, we love our fans. I think it's great. I want to see the faces of the people, and everybody's happy. The fans are still loyal. They, you know, now, they're more widespread as far as the age difference, because uh, back then, the fans then are now the parents, uh, and a lot of them bring their children to the concerts. And the kids seem to know exactly why they're here.
With a new generation of fans comes a new responsibility. Ed King shares what he's learned. These are a couple of songs that Ronnie Van Zandt wrote quite a few years ago, and they contain a pretty heavy warning message. I just wanted to let you know that about 12 years ago, my life was just about ruined because of drugs, and only by the grace of God was that able to change. It's a whole lot better without drugs, people. Oh, yes! It really is. Drug free life is a better way. I want you to listen to what these two songs have to say. saying here with you know filling in for your brother in the band 
But so far, you must be really pleased with the response of the crowds uh, coming out to see Leonard Skinner. Yeah, um, well, you know, man, Southern rock fans never die, so... Uh... I've always been a Leonard Skinner fan, so that's what I always liked about Leonard Skinner, you know, was there again, the, I love the music and the lyrics. It's as much a part of the tribute tour as anything. Everywhere they go, there's always time to sign a name or shake a hand. Sure. No, 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 no. I'm from MCA. Oh. How long you guys been waiting? An hour and a half. How long you been waiting? Took you at a store. Take a picture of this. I'm nervous. I can't believe it. She got Johnny Vance. Sure, he can. Right there. Don't come around here and beat us up. I'll hold it. Three and a half. Three and a half. Watch out. Down there in between. Right down there. Come over here. Come on. We won't bite. We're not gonna, we ain't going to fight you. How about it? Yeah. <laughs> and when it comes to Skinner fans, no member of the family gets left out. Uh, this goes out to everybody who named their dog Curtis Lowe. Searching for soda bottles and get myself some dough. Running down to the corner, down to the country store. Cash a man and give my money to a man named Curtis Lowe. Yeah. Oh, Kurt was a black man with white curly hair. It was the Curtis Lowe Band that made a surprise appearance at a local club in Portland, Oregon. A surefire way to bring the music closer to the people. By the way, nobody was fooled by the name. When you're a Skinner fan, word just kind of gets around. Of course, whenever we're in the same neighborhood, like this night in Detroit, this longtime fan just can't resist. Well, there ain't no change in the weather. Ain't no changes in me. Well, there ain't no change in the weather. Ain't no changes in me. And I ain't had it from nobody.
That's what they say when you pitch a perfect game. And it's been pretty close to that throughout the tribute tour. The future of the band is uncertain. The past year, though, has been anything but that. I've proven to myself in my heart that the legendary music of Leonard Skinner still lives on and that I can still play my Steinway piano in front of a few thousand people and do it just like I could do it 10 years ago. And that means a whole lot to me. It's a tribute to them, it's a tribute to the fans. The, band, the fans have bought the records over the past 10 years. I think a tribute's a pretty good name for it, really. Well, I hope we can come back when we're 48 years old and play for you just as well when we're, when we're 38. It's hard and fun and gratifying and great and bad and good and tremendous. It was worth every second of it. I'll never forget the fans. I'll, be, I'll never forget their faces. And I'll be very, very grateful that not only for Gary's sake, but for all of the all of the survivors, that they had a chance. The tribute tour to me has been a tremendous example and a, a major lesson in love and, and friendship and camaraderie. It would be my hopeful intention that the fans truly can see and appreciate that, you know, we did this for them and everybody knows what it was really all about, no matter what it was in our hearts about this. Just to be out there on stage with them guys and seeing see the recognition they've been getting all this time, I go, yeah, now I see what they're talking about. I would want to tell them how proud I was to be able to be there and that maybe I had a little piece of history. I think Ronnie and Cassie and Dean and 
And certainly Steve Gaines would, would look down upon us and say that we're doing a good job. You know, I think the Leonard Skinner man is going to be remembered no matter, no matter what. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to blow the roof off this place. Johnny Van Zandt on vocals. I would just hope that, that everybody who saw this tribute to her enjoyed it. And, um, you know, that the people would actually keep the music alive. I've kind of learned a lot about Ronnie and the band. And um, I think it's actually brought me a lot more closer to my brother than uh, I was before. I'm, gonna say, I'm not going to sing this song, people. I never have and never will because uh, only one man can sing this song on stage. And that's my older brother, Ronnie Van Zandt. So you guys sing for us tonight, okay? Can you let them hear you in rock and roll heaven? Can you let them hear you in rock and roll heaven or what, huh? Let them hear you real loud. Let's go south to Ronnie Van Zandt, California. Mr. Steve Gaines. Miss Cassie Gaines. Mr. Dean Kilpatrick. Mr. Chuck Flowers. And Mr. Dwayne Almond, okay? What song is it do you want to hear, California? I think they heard today the Lennon Skinner Band. The magic had returned. The tribute was complete. And the message was never more clear. For the Leonard Skinner family, friends, and fans, 10 years later and forever, the music continues. I'm as free 